Hey guys, this is Danny, um, back with another episode. This time I am going to go through my workflow for arranging a Funk Moon Camp track before sending stems to Campy. If you don't know what Funk Moon Camp is, um, it's a collaboration between myself, Potato Moons in the UK, and Campy in the States, and we've been releasing a track a week for the last 40, 50 I don't know, 50 weeks or something. Um, it's probably been around that, I guess. I don't know, 40. I lost count. But um, basically, this is not how I would usually do my own solo flips. Uh, I don't normally export stems. And Campy does his vocal, adds bass sometimes. Uh, sometimes does some rearrangement, adds effects, and does the mix in Logic. So he needs stems. And what we used to do was just use Koala on its own, um, which has some disadvantages as far as, like, basically when you export, it would export a stem for every single pad, um, which is obviously a lot more than he probably needs. So I came up with this system of breaking it down into kick, snare, hats, percussion, bass, synths, effects, and sample, which I mostly stick to. Um, but if I'm in a section where there's a lot of one thing and nothing in another, I might just split them up. But anyway, this is actually going to be about arranging um, a track using Drambo from scratch. So this is basically a blank template. I've just loaded up the track for this week, which is track uh, week 93 of the Flip Koala, Koala Beatcast Flip Challenge. Um, and I've got my template loaded up in, um, in Drambo. So when you load the template, now obviously for this template to work, you're also going to need to use the same mapping in Koala that I use. Um, I've included both on my coffee page, so go grab that. And without further ado, um, shit like and subscribe. And let's get on with it. So um, this hamburger menu lets you change the layout of this bottom keyboard. I like to set it to 16 by 1, which gives you 16 notes left to right here. Uh, you see the sequences start at C minus 2. And if I load up, if I show Koala on the side, uh, what you'll see is as I drag my mouse over this, um, the sequences are flipping. Now, uh, I'll get to this later when I actually do it, but it's as easy as just going, OK, I want this sequence here. Click that. It's now put an F2 there. And I want it to follow, I want it followed by this sequence. And now if I press play, which hopefully won't make any sound, but you'll see that the, oh, it does make a sound. All right, so um, that is essentially how you automate sequences. Um, and then you have effects, which is a similar thing. Uh, you just have your effects here. And then if you, as I showed in the last video, just click plus crush. And now it will go. So um, that's the effects. Simple. Uh, bank A. Uh, so this basically lets you trigger samples. So you see now it's on C2 moving up and it goes up to 16 pads. So as I go through this, uh, let's see if I can just make it smaller. Whoop. And um, so from there on, I can just make that big. So <clears throat> this 
This is the sequencer, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, this is the keyboard view, which lets you trigger all the sounds. And again, if I only really use this for one shots, and to be fair, I almost never use it uh, with Funk Moon Camp, and rarely on my own, really. But um, what I've essentially done now, what you see is if you if you use these sixteen notes and then go to the next set, it's actually gone up an octave, which means that it hasn't gone up a full sixteen, a set of sixteen. Uh, which means the more you go off, the less, um, the more kind of out of sync it is to to the actual um, layout of the pads. So what I've done is for bank B, I've just created a little thing that transposes the keyboard. So basically bank B, bottom corner is still C2, bank A, still C2, bank uh, C, still C2. So basically, I've got a transpose thing that you don't need to touch on each of these banks, which has offset these by 16 uh, on the input. So it just makes it easier to go, okay, well, I want C on this, I want this pad of C, that's like 8, 9, 10, 11th. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, I'm on A. That's that one. <laughs> okay, so um, that's basically for adding one shots. And once you have, an, once you start having an arrangement, you'll see that um, it's really easy. You just like, okay, I want this one shot. I'll just stick it here. Done. One shot. So, that's the banks. And then I've got the mix section, which basically has a separate mixer for each of, just in case, normally I don't automate these mixers because Campy will do it anyway, um, but it just basically gives me the option to automate, uh, for some reason the mouse isn't scrolling, so I have to scroll manually, but um, it gives me a, an opportunity to add um, automation to the mixer. So then I've got additional AUM uh, stuff. So these are just sending CCs on their number. Uh, so if for any reason I want CC10 to do something, um, I can just assign it straight away in AUM. And you'll see that Drambo is set to MIDI control and Koala sampler. So um, I can automate anything in AUM quickly and easily just by assigning it to 10, 11, 13. Don't know why 12 is not there. Um, and so that's basically the template. Now, the reason that I've got so many Koala effects everywhere um, is because, uh, as you probably know, effects only affect uh, channel one in most cases, apart from the gate effect and the pitch, I think. Um, so what I do in order for any automation that I do on Crush, etc., to work on every stem, uh, which for some reason it isn't. Let's see, why is that? Uh, did it not load the mapping? It appears it didn't load the mapping. So it should be part of the template. If I load the mapping here, uh, now it'll work. So, okay. So now you see that both are working together. I don't know why that one's not mapped. Let's, let me see on the others. Uh, these ones are mapped. So it was just the first one that wasn't automatically mapped. Now, what this also allows you to do is uh, I've got Koala effects channel two and channel three. Now, the only difference between this one and this one, if I show it, let me just show that. Um, if I unfold that and then open this, you see that the this is just a CC multi uh, knob sending to channel one. And this one, which I can't scroll with a mouse, is sending to CC2. And then I've got another one here, which is CC3. I've got a tornado, which I'll probably get rid of before I share this file, because it's 
less useful to you guys probably. Um, or I could leave it in there in case you have Tornado or get it later. But effectively what this allows me to do is to, if I want to, I can, by default, all the Koala effects are using the same mapping as main Koala. But if for any reason I want a particular channel, say channel three, so you'll see that these are, what is going on here with this mapping? Oh, <laughs> it's because this is up. Okay, right, that makes sense. So I was using the wrong one. So if I want to actually use this one on this instance, uh, which means that it's completely independent of main Koala and other Koala effects instances, I go into this menu, and then just set MIDI channel. And what that should do is bring up this dialog, which I changed to channel two. And you'll see that it's now changed all of these effects to channel two using the same actual CC mapping, which means now I can't uncrush it using this, but instead I can uncrush it using that. So now I've got two independent instances of Koala effects. Um, so in the rare instance that I want to use particular effects on a particular channel, I can do that uh, with up to three channels uh, by default. But it's really easy to just duplicate this, this if you need to. Uh, so I want to automate the crush um, here then I just do that. And if I want to also automate the crush on the other instance, I can just do that. So now I've got these two instances of automation uh, for the two different Koala effects instances. Uh, so I'm just gonna drag that off. And so, yep, yeah, that's the template. Um, and so the next thing we're gonna do is actually start listening to the track. Now we're going to prepare the file uh, for actual arrangement. And the first thing I need to do, and this is, you can probably skip this um, part if you're not interested, but um, what I'm going to do is listen to the samples and send them to different outputs. Uh, so I'll do that quickly now and I'll probably fast forward through this bit. Okay, I would call that percussion. So that's um, four. So I've got kick, snare, hi-hat, percussion, bass, uh, synths, effects, samples. So I call that effects. Now that's kind of the sample. That's the sample. I mean, that's kind of a effects, I guess. Just because I'm putting everything on effects, I'll put this on synth. Actually, I should probably turn that crash off. Um, okay, so that's sample. That's sample. That is kind of a synth, I suppose. I'm putting everything on sample, so... So the other outputs have actually still got the crush on them. Um, so I'm just going to undo that. So now that's turned off the crush in all other instances. Sample, kick, snare, hi-hat, bass. Uh, Percussion, more percussion, 
That's a fax. That's percussion. I'll put it on synth, I guess. So, I guess I'll put that on percussion. And that's the thing I added before. So, I don't think I added anything to... Uh, yeah, synth space. Right, so, now I've got that split, I can listen to the track. And so, the next step is to listen to what's there. And, which usually I will have already done, um, and I kind of have. But this, uh, just as an insight, this is... These three uh, were the first uh, sequences that were created by Potato Moons. Uh, so let's have a quick listen. So often they're quite similar to each other, just with a slight tweak of something different. And then this next one was Campy. This is Campy's first sequence. Now those guys like to have hold on everything. Um, which can make some happy accidents. And if you're using Logic and it's on its own stem, it's really easy to just fade things out or remove them if you need to. But um, I think there might have been something else playing over from uh, Damien's uh, sequence over Campy's. So I'm just going to stop and start. So this is Campy's first sequence. And then I got the file and I did this. So this is actually a fairly simple um, sort of track, <laughs> relatively speaking. Uh, the sections aren't too different from each other and they should go well together. Uh, I think these ones here uh, are my sequence with stuff added to it by um, Damien. And then I don't know who did the rest. Probably Damien, in this case. So what I tend to do is I'll start listening to how things mix. So... So uh, actually changing between sequences in order to mix them up. So that's quite a cool section that could um, use those two sequences, like mixing up. And this is where the advantage to not just going like this uh, is, because I'm not stuck to using full sequences. Uh, I can mix and match them. So basically, this is a simple track. We've got like a kind of intro vibe thing. Uh, then we've got Campy's sequence, which... I can use as a chorus. Um, now, the only thing is that everyone, all the other sequences are two bars long. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this one over here and use my um, trick for transitioning. So I've made that a one bar version of this. So at any point, if I wanna transition to Campy's four bar, 
and I want it to start at the beginning, I go to this one and then to that one, which is, again, really easy to do in the sequencer in Drambo. So, so that will re-trigger this four bar loop. So um, another thing that, big truck, another thing that I do sometimes do um, just so, because we've got a two minute limit or two, two to two minute, two to two and a half minute limit. Um, so what I did was I created myself a calculator, um, which I call track. So this stupid mouse scrolls down when I roll up, which is stupid section calculator, right? So what this does, it's not essential, but it does help me, uh, in planning what I'm going to do because I need the track length, which is currently zero at 82 beats per minute to be around two minutes. So let's say this intro is two bars. Let's say I want eight bars of intro. That's already 23 seconds. Uh, let me just re-listen to this. I think, um, is it two bars or is it four bars? What am I doing? It's four bars. Okay. So that's fine. I'll, um, so that's four bars. And I think that's probably long enough for the intro. 12 seconds. Then we'll go to uh, Campy's first. Let's play Campy's. That's four bars. Let's do eight bars of that. And then we'll go to my section for another eight bars, do campy for eight, and then do mine for eight. We're already at one minute 45. So you see how this is actually just useful. Um, and it can change later. Uh, I might be, uh, and then we've got like some effect stuff for eight. And that's it. So that's my map for the track. Um, you can see how that can just be useful because otherwise I'll be just like looping endlessly and not knowing how long the track's going to end up. So let's move on into the arrangement. So now what I can do, if you use this, you can transfer it. Otherwise you just start doing it manually. So chapter arrangement. <laughs> um, now, the first thing I want to do is go into the sequencing portion and transfer what I did, uh, what I planned, and then we'll see what happens. So what I'm going to do is not accidentally hit samples, and I'll open the sequencer. So first of all, first section's four bars. I drag this to four. Add another section. This one's eight bars. So I drag it to eight. Oops. Now I'll drag the first one to eight. Let's now crop that. That's fine. Now second one to eight. Now, as I said in the other video, I think for when I'm going to be doing effects, I want these to be the same. So um, I'm not going to be adding one shot, so I don't need to worry about those. But um, I think you can actually copy these here too. Yeah, so um, that's a way of doing it. So you can just, while they're blank, copy them over. Um, and then I've got one, two, three, four more eight bar sections. So I just click this, boop, which, so this, this button adds a blank line. Um, and the other one adds a copy. Now, if I had different, as I've, I've said this in one of the other videos, but if I had this arrangement of things with stuff in it, if you press this button, they'll all be these particularly particular selected sequences uh, will all be put into a single row. But I don't want to do that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, eight, and one, four at the beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, 
eights. And then to finish off, I'll double, I'll duplicate that and make it 16 because this is going to be where my fade out is and the end of the track. And I can stop recording sometime in this silence. So already I've kind of got a structure going. Okay. So now I don't need this anymore. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, get up this, and I only need it small because I'm just looking at the sequences and which sequences I am selecting at the moment. Um, so um, I go to the first part here, I open the keyboard, and I want probably, well, I'll probably just want to go straight to this one. And then I'm going to go to the one next to it. So that, as you see, I'm just identifying which sequence I'm using along the bottom. And then I just put it down as the first note of the first bar of this sequence. Now, the next eight, I want to be the next bar. And because it's going from a four bar to a four bar, I don't need to do anything fancy. I'll just put that in there. So that will hold this for eight. Um, then I want uh, probably, I don't know, like this one's more built up than that one. So I can mix them up, but initially I can put this one down for the first four bars. Um, let's have a listen to them. Now, you'll see what happened. When I press, because now I've started putting sequences in, um, it's going to play the sequence that's selected, in this case, with Campy's um, sequence, is sequence three. I need to go to sequence four for it to to actually let me play with well I mean I can play with the sequences even after so when it first starts it will trigger campy sequence so regardless of what I've got selected in Koala if I start playing it's going straight to, to uh, campy sequence so now I can go off it but if this loops back round this first instruction is going to change it back to campy's so um, generally you go to the to the blank um, the blank sequence and then in this case I want uh, this sequence for the first I don't know two maybe bars and then this one for the next two bars and then we'll go to the last one for the four bars now uh, after that, I wanted to go back to Campy's, and I'm going from a two bar sequence to a four. So in this case, I'm just going to trigger this one initially. And then at any point next to it, it could be as soon as that, but I tend to just leave a gap, it'll go here. Now if I, if I uh, show you what this is doing, it will just select this one, and then that one really quickly. Okay, so that's basically the same as you manually going short, long, um, except it's really easy and automatic. So after that, I want to, what did I do? Nope. Oh yeah, so that's just selected the next one. Oops, I'm dragging things around now. Um, so the next one, what's happening? I've done something weird. Let's see. So what we've got, we got um, Campy, uh, no, intro for four, Campy for eight, and then I've got a duplicate of Campy for eight. So that I can just move there. Uh, in fact, I can just get rid of it and put it up here because we've got Campy for eight, we got me for eight, then we've got Campy going from a two bar to an eight bar, uh, four bar for another eight. And then I've got a blank, which uh, I'm going to make the one where I play um, with 
these sequences. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go doo -doo -doo, up here somewhere. Now we're in sequences two. There we go. So that's the thing. I don't even look at what note this is and think about it. I just drag my mouse along or my finger <laughs> until I know what it is. So what I'm going to do is on this one, let's just play it. Uh, starting with this. So um, I'm going between this one. Oops, no, where am I? That one and that one. So what I could do just to change things up is actually record it in playing. Um, so I'll put the first one just to start and then I'll press play. Then I can, I'll press record here, press play. And then whenever I feel like it, I can just swap between these two. Now, if you've got record enabled, uh, it will step record. So we actually want to delete these. I think it's just that you have to not be recording to, to be able to edit these. So I drag over them and then clear. Okay, so what's going to happen is, regardless of where I am, it's going to start on G sharp 2. So now I'm going to start recording and play. Okay, so that's eight bars where I've just, all of my triggers got uh, saved. And you can use an external input for that if you want, um, or just do it manually. Now, obviously, well, not maybe not that obviously, but Koala doesn't send MIDI out on sequence changes. So you can't just do this in Koala and expect it to record. It just won't do anything. So let's listen to what we just did with this sequence. Okay, so after that, I'm going to go to, now this is going to be the last eight of the track. Uh, maybe I'll go to this one. Let's see what that is. Maybe I'll mix it up with Campy's. So uh, let's start with uh, Campy. So we'll go with that one and transition to that one. And then after that, I will mix it up. So I'll go between D sharp minus two and some of these up here uh, doesn't doesn't really matter let's see what happens so i'll start playing <laughs> So that is that. 
I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but then Campy takes it and does magic, adds vocals, adds other things. Um, it doesn't need to be necessarily more complicated than that. Um, and so that's the arranging of sequences. Now, the only thing is on this last one, I want to transition to a blank sequence at the beginning. So if I listen to this uh, from... Well, so if I have this off and press play, it will go back to the first sequence. But if I have it on, it will play what I'm playing. But then I turn it off. So then when it gets to the end of the eight, it will actually transition onto the next bar. So that's a way to then skip ahead to the middle of your song and listen to it onwards from that point. Um, so this is getting pretty long. I'm going to just do some effects automation. All right, so now we've got a one shot that's playing over the, the end, which is fine. So that's that. Um, let's have a listen. Well, I won't. Well, let's not have a listen. I'm just going to play with some effects. So uh, in this case, I'm probably going to use uh, my fingers, but I like to use filter and crush quite a lot. So um, I've turned I've turned this off so that it will follow um, the entire song. And if I press record, uh, anything I change will be saved. And anything I don't like later, I can just get rid of. So uh, let's play. As I'm letting go, it goes back to its default state. keep that I don't need to worry about a fade out at the end, um, but I can add one just so you see what happens. So if I go to uh, the end and then I go to the AUM track or the mix track, and now again, this has only got one bar in it, which means that whatever I put into this one bar is gonna be repeated over and over and over. So I need to make sure that I've got 16 bars or however many I need in here. Now this has got only eight in it. So that means it will return after eight. Let me just make that 16 as well. 
I can do this manually if I'm going to just automate the master mix. I can just uh, click on this, click the plus, click the value. Uh, I'll go to the beginning of fourth bar, turn it down. Now you'll see that it goes back up to the 16th bar, so I'll just put that down. So now that's what's happening. Um, and I'll give it a bit of a curve. So to listen to that, I would just go back to the section before it and play. fading out. Cool. So that's basically it. Um, at this point, if I wanted to, like I said at the beginning, um, add effects to individual channels, which I don't really need to, um, I will just do that using those. Um, obviously, I'll listen through after recording this and go and tweak these effects. Um, as you'll see that everything I touched um, got saved in here. So as I play through the track, let's say I want to listen to what this, this does. And I know that there was a... Right, so I don't like that. I'm going to get rid of it. Boop, done. Um, and I'm not sure I like the cutter either. So let me just listen to just that section. That's not too bad. Um, so obviously when you go around here, it's going to keep um, playing the same effect over and over, but the koala will continue to play the entire sequence. So it won't necessarily be the end of the eighth bar when you listen to it, because Koala's in its own sync. But it does mean that you can kind of just listen to what the effects were in a particular bar, um, and then just tweak them accordingly. Uh, so there was also another section which had... Um, it had a... So the cutter, now this is another thing which may be of interest. Uh, if you transition over the bar change, you'll see that it's actually um, recording, <clears throat> it records through the bar into the next one, which is why there's a cutter here that's got almost nothing in it. So that's fine, I can just get rid of that. Now if you want a filter change, for example, so you see here I've got a filter that I, I filtered it, did I filter it at the end? What's going on? So I started filtering here. Let's listen to what's going on here. say the what was that pitch pitch effect mm, unnecessary I'll get rid of it um, so this one so dubs going up near the end I might get rid of it
find it. It's fine. So I remember there was a time uh, where I touched the stutter and I didn't like it. So I'm just going to look. Oh, there it is. So this, let's listen to this with a stutter. Now I can either tweak the stutter or just get rid of the, the whole thing. You see it's going around the same eight bars. Now, I'm not sure if I mind that or not. I might not. Let's listen to that as a transition. Nah, that's all right. I can live with that. So... That's basically it, really. So the only thing left to do from there is I then set all of these tracks to record and export the stems for Campy. Um, I don't really do much more than that. I don't do any mixing. Uh, Campy does all that in Logic. As I say, if you enjoy this video, I, I may do one about a solo flip at some point, uh, which is way more like all over the place and probably harder to follow because it's just like a brain dump of oh i want this i want now i want to automate something else i'm just gonna create a knob and i i actually don't use this template for my personal flips very often um because i don't know what i'm gonna need um and i don't normally just use koala uh and eight eight instances um like eight outputs in the case of Funk Moon Camp, because we're just exchanging Koala files between each other, um, it just means that it's this is the thing that has made the most sense for us to do. Um, and it's kind of organized and doesn't take too long um, for any of us. But um, yeah, my personal flips are a completely <laughs> different story, which we may get to at some other time but until then thanks very much for watching i think that pretty much covers everything that needs to be covered if you have any questions let me know um hit like subscribe and while you're picking this template up at the coffee page you can support me by buying a coffee or something and um i will see you around thank you